All right, so for this game, we have what is roughly a, a grouping game. So we have these three windows, apparently, and what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to assign colors to these windows. Now, we'll just label them one, two, and three, although it's worth noting in this game, um, the actual window numbers don't really seem to matter too much, but still, just for reference, we'll, we'll do that. Now, the elements themselves happen to be G, O, P, R, Y, and it's worth noting that in terms of spacing, we are told that um, there's going to be at least two colors in each window, um, which means that there's definitely going to be some duplication, right? Some of these colors are definitely going to show up in more than one window. Um, from there, though, I suppose let's let's take a look at the rules. So the first rule tells us that exactly one of the windows includes both G and P. So I suppose we can say exactly one GP block. And it's worth noting, not only do we have to have a GP block, but we can only have one. We have to have exactly one. Next, we are told that we're going to have to have exactly two R's. So I suppose that's good to know. R is going to duplicate and there's going to be exactly two of them. Next, we are told that if we have yellow, then that window can have neither green nor orange, which to be honest is, is really just a roundabout way, kind of complicated way to simply say that yellow can't be with green and that yellow can't be with orange. So I'm just going to rewrite that rule that way. We can say that you're not allowed YG and you're not allowed YO, um, which does make Y kind of antisocial then, doesn't it? Because I suppose that means that Y could be with P or R, but that's, that's pretty much it. Anyways, let's keep going. If a window does not have purple, then they'll have to have orange. So if there's no purple, then there will be orange contraposed. If there's no orange, then there is purple. Now this rule pattern, this conditional statement should be kind of familiar because um, this is really just an inclusive statement. Um, and we can do a lot with that. What this is basically telling us is that every single window here, if they don't have one, then they have to have the other. It means that you have to have one of the two. Um, so we can actually reserve a space under each window for one of P or O. So that's kind of a good place to start. Um, in fact, wait a minute. Every single window has to have one of P or O, but we know why. Y is never going to go with O. So I suppose we can actually kind of say that anytime you have to have a Y, um, it's always going to have to be with a P because you have to have one of the two. So we can say if there is a Y, then there will definitely be a Y P block. And I think they do mention that, yeah, every single color has to be used at least once. So there will definitely be a Y P block on the board somewhere. Um, and I suppose we can actually also say that we also have to have a GP block somewhere. And on top of that, we know that Y and G don't play nice. So we can actually take a, a further step. We can say that one of these windows will definitely have a YP block and a different one of these windows, since Y can't go with G, will have to have a GP block. Um, so that's kind of nice. Now the R's, they're kind of loose entirely, right? There's no real restrictions on R's whatsoever. We just have to have two of them. Um, so you know what? Let's let's go with this. Let's see what we can do. The questions themselves. Number seven. So number seven is just a straight exclusion question. As usual, we go by the original set of rules. So the first rule told us that um, we have to have exactly one GP block. So let's take a look. A has one. B has one. C has. Oh, C has two GP blocks, which we know is not okay. So we can get rid of answer choice C. Answer choice D has one and E looks good as well. We have one too. Next, we have to have exactly two R's. Let's see if anything violates that. Answer choice B has one and two has a, have an R. C has two R's. D has two R's. E has just one. We can get rid of answer choice E. There's only one R there. Next. We can't have Y with G or with O. So let's take a look. Answer choice A has Y with R and that's it. So that's cool. Answer choice B has a Y with a P and that's it. That's fine. Answer choice D has a Y with an O. That's not cool. So we can get rid of answer choice D. So now we're just down to A and 
B. And lastly, if we don't have P, then we have to have O. So answer choice A, so you'll notice that answer choice A does not have a P or an O on window number two. So that doesn't work. We can get rid of answer choice A for that reason. And for the record B, you'll notice does have a P or an O on every single window. So the best answer for number seven is B. Now from there, um, I suppose actually let's just plug that into the board in case it comes in handy. So answer choice B says GPR. Then we've got GRO. And then we've got P and Y. Next, so let's start with the local questions. Number nine is our first local, which says, if two of the windows are made with exactly two colors of glass. So essentially that tells us that two of our windows are gonna have exactly two colors. For the record, the reason that I used windows numbers one and two is again, in this game, it doesn't seem to matter like which window numbers are which. So I'll just I'll arbitrarily start there. Um, and we know that the third window is gonna have at least two, but it could potentially maybe have more. Now, I suppose what we do know is that, as we said, every single window has to have one of P or O. So we'll plug that into each window. And moreover, I guess we also know that we have to have exactly two R's, which means the R's don't necessarily have to go into both of these windows, but one of them will, right? Because the two R's obviously can't both go into this window. So at least one of the R's is going to lock out one of these two windows. So we can kind of reserve a space here. Now the other R we're not 100% sure on, perhaps it can go into two or three. Anything else we can do? I suppose we know that we still have to have a YP block somewhere, um, and we have to have a GP block somewhere, and they have to be separate. So actually, wait a minute, that means that the other R, it can't really go here, can it? Because basically we'll have to have either a YP block here or a GP block here, no matter what, right? Because they can't both go into three. So the other R actually has to go into this window so that we have, where we have some extra room for the YP or GP block. And then what will happen is one of these two blocks will go in here. In fact, we can even say that this will be for sure a P with one of Y or G. And then the other of them will go into this window. Um, now this could still be an O as long as we have another P over there that could still be okay. Like if this was a G P block in here, you could have an O there as well. That's a little bit flexible still. Um, so, okay, yeah, we're in a pretty good position. Let's see what we can do. The question itself now asks, which of the following or the complete combination could be what? Answer choice A. Could we have an R, Y as a complete combination? And no, that would never happen because R always has to go with one of P or O. So answer choice A is out. Answer choice B, can we have an O and an R? And actually, yeah, maybe in this window, if this is an O, then this could be an R and I think we would be okay. So B looks pretty good. Just in case though, um, let's take a look at the rest. Can we have just O and P? And no, you'll notice that there's never an opportunity for it to be just O and P. Every single window has at least something else there, so that wouldn't work. Answer choice D, can we have just G and R? And same thing that, actually, simply put, we always have to have a P or an O in every single window, so you definitely can't just have G and R. Answer choice E, can we have just G and O? And again, none of these three windows seem to allow for just those guys to be there. So the best answer here is answer choice B for question number nine. Next, question number 10. If the complete setup in one of the windows is P, R, O. Well, I guess let's see what we can do. If the complete setup is P, R, and O, and I suppose we can lock that out. I guess, what does that tell us? I mean, the other two windows each are gonna have to have at least two as usual. Oh, well, wait a minute. We, we don't have a GP block and we don't have a YP block. So we're gonna have to have them in between these two windows. So we can kind of say that one of these two is definitely going to be a YP. And then the other of these two will definitely be 
a GP. So that's that's a pretty good start. Now we still have to have another R. We've got one taken care of, but the other one still has to go somewhere. But that's flexible. R doesn't really have any other restrictions. Um, we've taken care of the O or P for every window since we have a P there. So I guess from here, we're good. We have a little bit of flexibility, but this is what we know. The question itself asks, the complete setup in one of the windows could be what? So what could be the complete color combination for one of these? A, can we have G, O, and R? And no, that doesn't really happen. The one G that we have here has to be with P, so it's not gonna be G, O, R. Um, answer choice A is out. Can we have G, O, P? And actually maybe in here, could we throw in another O over here? That seems okay. You can even have an R there as well. They're pretty friendly. As long as there's not a Y there, then I think that should be fine. Let's hold on to answer choice B. Let's take a look at the rest. Can we have O and R, just O and R? And no, none of these windows would allow for you to just have O, R. Can we have just O, P? Again, no, every single one of these has at least something else. Can we have just G, O? And no, the one G is with a P, so that's not gonna work. Best answer here is answer choice B for number 10. Next, number 11. If O is used more than G, so if we have to have more O's than G's, I suppose the question as usual is, what does that tell us? What can we do with that information? Um, oh, well, actually, wait a minute. We know that Y and O don't play nice, which means that we can't have O's everywhere. We certainly cannot have three O's on the board um, since we have to have a place for a Y somewhere. But since we have more O's than G's, then we're gonna have to have specifically and exactly two O's, right? We can't have just one, but we can't have three O's either. So what's gonna happen in this scenario is we're gonna have to have two O's and then the other window is gonna have to have the Y. So we can kind of start that off. We can say we're gonna have to have two O windows and then there's gonna be a Y window. And we know Y always carries P, so that's a decent start. Um, what else do we know? Well, we have to have a GP block somewhere. Um, and I suppose, well, it's definitely not gonna go with a Y. So I guess the GP block is gonna go into one of these two windows since there's no real difference between them. We'll just arbitrarily plug them into one. And from there, oh, I suppose that's actually the only G, isn't it? Because since there's more O's than there are G's, we can actually say that there would be two O's and there would be one G specifically. So we've exhausted the G's, um, but we still have R's to play with and P's. P's are pretty flexible as well. We could still have another one. So in this window, it can't be a G, it can't be a Y. This has to be either an R or a P. And then there's gonna be some other R's floating around. Let's take a look. The question asks, the complete combination could be what in one of the windows? Can we have just O and P? Actually, maybe, no, couldn't we? If we put just O and P over here, that seems like it wouldn't break anything. And then the R's could go one over here and one over there. So maybe answer choice A, let's hold on to it. Answer choice B, can we have G, P, R anywhere? Well, no, because the G, P has to be with O. You could have had an R there, but you still have to have an O. Answer choice C, can it be G and P as a complete setup? Again, no, because the G, P is with the O. Next, can, be, can it be just G and O? And no, because again, G has to also be with P. Lastly, can we have just G, O, and R? And no, because again, you would have to include the P with the G. So the best answer to question number 11 is a. Next question number 12 is global. Let's come back to this one in a second. Number 13. If none of the windows has both R and O. So if we can't have what is essentially an R with an O, what does that tell us? Well, we know that we're going to have to have two R's, which means that for this scenario, the O is there's just going to be one O and it's going to have to go into the other window. So I guess we can start this off that way. We can say we're going to have to have two R's and then the other one will be an O. And moreover, since the R's can't be with O, but one of these two always has to be there, that essentially tells us that R's are going to be with P's across the board. Next, anything else we can do here? I suppose we we have to have a Y somewhere with a P. Oh, and wait a minute, the Y can't go with O. 
So the YP block is going to have to be into one of these two spots. So I guess we can put in Y in number one, for example. And I think that's it, because Y was pretty antisocial, right? Um, it couldn't go with O or G. Those are the only other guys. So this window is effectively done. Now, as far as the other windows are concerned, we still have to have a GP block, I suppose, don't we? Um, but it could be in either, like we could have a GP over here, or you could have a G over here. I suppose we do have to have another second component in window three. And it can't be R because, again, these guys don't play nice. It can't be, I guess it would have to be either a G or a P here. But that could still go either way. So you know what, let's see what we can do with this. The question asks, the complete color combination of one of the windows must be, ooh, if we're looking for what must be a complete color combination, then I guess we would be looking for RPY because that's the only one that we completely locked down. And yeah, there it is, answer choice E gives us P, R, and Y. Best answer to question 13 is E. Lastly, back to the globals. Number eight, which of the following cannot be the complete color combination in one of the windows? Okay, I suppose let's take a look. Answer choice A, could we have just a G, N, and O in one of the windows? And maybe, I mean, we've seen that kind of, ha like over here, we could have had a G with an O over here, and then you could have had a G with a P over there. I think that could have been okay. Answer choice B, could we have had just a G and a P? And maybe, I'm not sure. Actually, yeah, we have. We've seen that right here, potentially. Um, so why not? Answer choice C, could you have just a G, N, and R? And I don't think we've, oh no, that definitely can't work because every single window has to have a P or an O. So there's no way to ever have just G and R. So the best answer here is answer choice C for question number eight. Next, number 12, let's take a look. Which of the following could be used in every single window? Um, I suppose we could kind of do this by process elimination because, I mean, we know that um, all of these guys don't play nice with each other, right? Y, G, and O, which means that we can't have them on all three windows because um, if we had one of them in all three windows, somebody else would be missing. So we can cross off Y, G, and O. That would easily get rid of A, B, and E. And then what are we left with? I guess C and D, P and R. Well, R, we know that we have to have exactly two of them. So that certainly wouldn't ever work. So D is out. So the best answer is C. And to be fair, purple was very much kind of a friendly color in this game. Um, they weren't really causing any issues. So yeah, best answer here is C.